Okay, so in chapter one, section one, um, we're going to learn what exactly Ruby on Rails is and what it's used for. So Ruby on Rails, which I'll be referring to as Rails, uh, it's an open source framework for building powerful web applications. And it is not a programming language. Rails is not a programming language. It's, it's, a, it's a structure, it's a framework to build web apps using the Ruby programming language. Ruby is the actual language, not Ruby on Rails. Rails was created in 2004 by David Heinemeyer Hansen, or he's also known as DHH uh, among geeks. Um, and he created Ruby on Rails in 2004, and the Ruby language was created in 1993. So Rails came about 10 years later. Um, as I said, it's based on the Ruby language. Uh, Ruby, Rails can work with multiple types of servers and databases. Um, it can run on, it, it has its own server called Webbrick, um, but it can also run on Apache and, and other servers as well. And as far as databases, it, can, it comes with um, SQL Lite 3 as a default, which is not a, it's a, it's a serverless database. Um, but it can also be used with MySQL and Postgre uh, databases as well. Uh, Rails is based on the MVC design pattern, with it, which is Model View Controller, and you're going to hear that a lot throughout this series. Um, it's, it's one of the most popular and best, in my opinion, um, pattern design patterns available. What it does is basically separates the what the user sees, you know, the HTML and the presentation separates that from the controllers, um, the routing system, and also the business logic, which is in the model, which is usually consists of database queries. So Rails is it's different from other web app frameworks in a couple different ways. Uh, one way is it claims that it's the right way to develop web apps. Uh, many of the the hardcore Rails developers wouldn't consider another way of developing um, as far as the actual structure and framework of the application. And there's a popular phrase in the Rails community which is convention over configuration. Uh, and what this essentially means is that Rails tries to reduce the amount of work for our developers and it does this by having a strict set of naming conventions. Um, as far as structure, as far as folder names and class names, there's a really strict convention on naming, and it, it just it lets Rails be simple without losing its flexibility and, and having uh, customized applications. There's a lot of other frameworks out there that utilize several configuration files with a ton of settings and controls. Um, so th that would be a, a configuration-based system framework. Um, they provide settings that are specific to each separate product pro project. Ugh. <laughs> and this could be anything from mapping URLs to, to database and class structure. Um, Rails really focuses on the naming convention over the configuration. So there's less work to do. There's less um, there's less customized work to do but you can still have customization if that makes any sense. <laughs> Um, another popular phrase is don't repeat yourself or D DRY and that essentially means what it says it's it's it suggests that writing the same code over and over multiple times is not productive and rails was created for productivity if anything else um, so that's a big that's a big thing in rails is not to repeat yourself uh, rails runs independent of the web server uh, like I said, you could have you can run Rails on multiple types of servers, Apache. Um, it actually includes its own web server, which is called Webbrick. Um, so you can run a, a local Rails server on any any computer, you, and you don't need to have WAMP or or anything like that. Um, it just runs right on your machine. It's very cool. And the last thing, is, Rails looks at everything as an object. It's very, very object orientated. Um, anything from strings to, to actual numbers are actually objects. You can call methods on a number. For instance, there's a times method. So you can have seven dot times. 
and that's actually that will run um, whatever phrase or string you put in seven times so it's it's very very object orientated but you can also pr create uh, procedural types of apps as well so um, it's very flexible so as you probably know Ruby is the programming language that Ruby on run <laughs> Ruby on Rails runs <laughs> it's like a tongue twister um, so and if you don't know Ruby if you don't know anything of Ruby at all uh, you don't really have to worry because um, it's very Ruby is a, is a very easy language to learn but what you should have a basic idea of is just programming in general um, a lot of people where learn rails and they don't know any Ruby at all um, and that's fine you, you can you can get by uh, you just need to really understand stuff like variables functions or methods um, uh, conditionals if statements stuff like that just basic programming stuff you don't need to know a lot um, and we'll actually actually chapter 2 is all about Ruby so we'll actually be learning some of the language and some of the um, just the just basic programming principles so uh, don't worry about that if you don't know any Ruby uh, Windows and Linux a, lo a lot of Rails developers will not work on Windows just because Real, uh, Ruby and Ruby on Rails uh, initially ran on Linux and it, it was it used to be a lot easier to run Rails on Linux than Windows but there has been a lot of uh, developers that are now using Rails on Windows due to these new um, kits that, that are available and one of the kits is this R Windows Rails installer and you need a lot to run Ruby on Rails. You need SQLite, you need um, Ruby Gems. There's just a, there's a, a lot of stuff you need. And this Rails installer software actually lets us install it on any Windows machine uh, extremely easy. It's very, very easy. It's just basically uh, just like installing any, any software on your Windows machine. Um, you go through the installer and then you can, it, it gives you an actual command line to use. Uh, you can do git, you can do um, pretty much anything you could do in Linux. So um, Windows is definitely, uh, it's definitely more developers are starting to use Windows. Um, and in this particular series we will be focusing on Windows but we, we will also dabble in Linux as well. Um, I'm going to show you how to install it on Linux Ubuntu and I'm actually going to show, I, I have an optional video of installing Ubuntu, uh, installing Linux Ubuntu onto a um, virtual machine using VMware. Um, you don't have to do that. I just thought that I'd throw it in because I was doing the. I had I had to have somehow to show you the installation on Linux, so I, I just recorded the uh, VM installing Linux itself. So you can do that as well if you want to mess around in Linux. Um, and the other piece of software we'll be using is Interactive Ruby, which is a program for Windows that will allow us to to type Ruby right in the command line um, just as if it was a Linux machine with Ruby installed. Ruby Gems uh, is a package manager for Ruby on Rails. Um, it's basically just little pieces of code that you can plug into your Ruby on Rails site. Um, Ru Rails itself is actually a, a gem. Um, once you have Ruby Gems you can use the syntax with gem install whatever the name of the gem. They can be looked at kind of as modules uh, or plugins, um, something like that. And they are used to distribute Ruby based programs and libraries, so just chunks of code that you can utilize in your, in your app. Um, it's used as a tool to manage installation of gems, so just like the syntax, you, you can gem uninstall, install, uh, whatever and Ruby Gems is part of the standard library from Ruby 1.9 on and what we will be using Ruby 1.9.3 and Rails is, is a gem itself you can actually install Rails through Ruby Gems so that's it uh, that's the basic just the basics of Rails and Ruby and Ruby on Rails so now we can get into some programming um, so next up we have the installation of 
Ruby and Ruby on Rails on both Linux and Windows. So uh, let's move on.